Good morning to you and welcome back to Practical Stoicism. I'm your host, Tanner Campbell, as always. And hey, if you want to get rid of ads, you can do so for $6 a month by going to stoicism.supercast.com or by going to stoicismpod.com and clicking the link in the top right-hand corner. If you can't afford to support the show financially or if that's just not your thing, I get it. That's cool. You can also support Practical Stoicism by reviewing it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, or Podchaser.com, or by sharing it with friends or family members whom you think would enjoy it. Today, we're diving into Meditation 7 from Book 4 of the Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, which reads as follows. It is natural that these things should be done by such persons. It is a matter of necessity. And if a man will not have it so... He will not allow the fig to have juice, but by all means bear this in mind, that within a very short time both thou and he will be dead, and soon not even your names will be left behind. Everything we've talked about on this podcast up till right now, Marcus is telling us here, must be put into practice, for if it is not, then we will grow to be incomplete men and women, and we will die that way. We grow tomatillos here at my house in this little garden box that we've got outside. And there's this thing that happens with tomatillos when they are not fertilized by the insects that are supposed to fertilize them. And this seems to happen about half of the time, about half of whatever crop we can pull together in a year, this seems to happen to. A tomatillo, if you don't know what it is, looks like a tiny green tomato, and it's got kind of ridges on it the way that a pumpkin does. But the real contents of a tomatillo are on the inside. But if they're not fertilized, that husk will form, but nothing will form inside. So you'll go to take it off the vine and it will crumple in your hands because there's nothing in it. Tomatillos grow their paper-thin husk first, and then once that husk is formed and sealed, fills in with its other bits. Are human beings not very similar to this? We have all our internal bits when we are born, but our minds are fairly empty when our skulls first seal up, aren't they? It is then up to us, our teachers, our parents, our experiences, some of those experiences being dumb luck, things far outside of our control, to fill that brain with useful things so that it is not just an empty husk. This is true also perhaps of our bodies. Can we grow within our husk-like bodies the resilience to be brave and strong and in love with justice? or wise and possessed of a temperate spirit. Of course, all of that actually goes on in our brains, but where do we feel brave? In our chests, right? And where do we feel our emotions? Certainly not in our brains. Marcus is saying that we will be like an empty tomatillo, or, well, in his words, a juiceless fig, if we do not spend the time we have developing virtue within ourselves. And you know what? If we don't use our time to develop those things, then we will die juiceless figs or empty tomatillos. And any chance that we had to fill ourselves with virtue, to become useful to ourselves and others, will be spent. And soon enough, after we die, no one will remember our names, for we never became something worthy of remembering for very long. Of course, no matter how virtuous you are, everyone will eventually forget you. But in the case of Marcus, here we are thousands of years later reading his work and talking about his influence. But have you heard of the great things done by his neighbor, Steve? No, you haven't. And that might be because Steve spent his entire life as a juiceless fig, an empty husk that never filled himself in so as to be as useful as those we do remember. Although, to be fair, Marcus certainly had the benefit of being an emperor, but there are plenty of emperors we rarely ever talk about if we ever talk about them, and many hail Marcus as the best emperor to ever rule. We shouldn't chase legacy. We shouldn't become virtuous for the sake of recognition. But by becoming virtuous, we might have an impact beyond our death. And that might be a good thing for those who come after us. And it may be good to be a continued benefit to the communities that you die within. So think about the ways your husk right now isn't completely filled in and consider how you might change that. Thank you for listening to this episode of Practical Stoicism. If you enjoyed it, if you learned something from it, consider leaving a review of this show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, or Podchaser.com. Again, if you'd like to get rid of ads and if you'd like to support the show, you can become a premium subscriber by going to stoicism.supercast.com and any support you can give, I would greatly appreciate. Thank you again for listening and until next time, take care. 